This iconic waterfront park in Seattle is now closed after structural engineering. Earthquake erupting early this morning in Seattle with a magnitude of 4.6. Magnitude earthquake struck just before 6 Eastern in the town of Three Lakes, Washington. That is just outside. Dawn breaks over Seattle, the city built on water and innovation, cupped between jagged peaks and the endless expanse of Puget Sound. Ferries churn across calm morning waves and the skyline rises bright and determined, glass mirroring mist and pale sunlight. It's easy to believe in permanence here, to trust the steel towers and time-worn homes, anchored for generations on ancient earth. Yet, beneath the streets and venturesome roots of old growth trees, something shifts, murmurs in the stone, tension in the bones of the land. While most of the city moves onward, unaware, Scientists lean closer to the ground, reading new signals in the deep. Recently, those signals have grown clearer, challenging the city's collective sense of security. Updated seismic models now illuminate hidden cracks and segmented faults beneath Seattle. Faults drawn not just as lines on a map, but as active, pressurized boundaries shifting in silence. And in the heart of this story stands the Seattle Fault Zone, a scar older than memory, showing subtle but significant changes. Minor tremors, a 3.0, then a 3.5, have rippled through the region, largely unfelt, but under close expert scrutiny. In research labs, on seismograph screens, and in the hush of university basements, experts interpret new data, knowing that every spoke of energy beneath the city is charted as a matter of possibility, not fear. We like to think disaster plays out on a distant stage, reserved for other coastlines, other fault lines, other older cities. But what if the real drama isn't explosive, but incremental? What if the most profound changes arrive, not with sirens and panic, but with the slow flex and creak at the very base of Seattle's foundations? What lies beneath Seattle's ever bright skyline? And what do the new findings about cracks and segmentation reveal about the city's future. Faults in Motion, Seattle's Subsurface Secrets. To unearth the future, you must read the rock. Seattle, for all its innovations and relentless momentum, is a city built upon a riddle, a landscape shaped, warped, and stitched together by invisible tectonic hands. At its root, the region is caught within a drama millions of years in the making. The slow collision between the Juan de Fuca plate and the North American plate. Their ancient contest is most direct in the Cascadia subduction zone, where oceanic crust dives beneath the continent's edge. But unlike the visible drama of California, where the San Andreas carves a dramatic scar, Seattle's threats are more ambiguous, hidden beneath layers of glacial silt, river channels, and memory. Here, the Seattle Fault Zone snakes beneath city life like a ghost, mapped, abstract, loaded with old energy. It sits not at the distant edge of the state, but in the city's very heart, roughly paralleling Interstate 90 as it stretches from the Olympic Peninsula to the Cascade foothills. Once, Seattle's earthquake preparedness rested on the belief that this fault, while real, was largely dormant, a relic of past violence unlikely to reawaken soon. Such calm was reassuring, albeit incomplete. Tremors seemed rare and minor, with major ruptures considered the realm of modeling. But with improved techniques, deep imaging, GPS arrays, and refined seismic sensors, the fault beneath Seattle is telling a more complex story. New research has revealed stress cracks suggestive not of imminent disaster but of ongoing, subtle strain. Not the threat of a catastrophic rupture, but incremental motion and tension, shifting the land one millimeter at a time. Plots of ground motion, updated with recent data, display fresh irregularities. Minor earthquakes, a 3.01 morning and a 3.5 just days apart, form a background rhythm, a subtle reminder that the story is active, not dormant. This unsettling data demands new interpretations and a more humble view of the forces shaping the land underfoot. What exactly do these new findings indicate? Are they inconsequential 
or are they hints of accumulating pressure that could reshape the city's narrative? Cracking the code, segmented faults, and shifting predictions. For years, the Cascadia subduction zone and its associated faults, including the Seattle Fault, were pictured as continuous breaks, organized and predictable. But nature is rarely so tidy. Recent research has reframed these faults as segmented structures, intricate branching systems, more like braided rivers than clean fractures. Each segment may slip separately or together, releasing energy in unpredictable bursts. This segmentation changes risk. Scenarios once considered unlikely, a rupture that doesn't break smoothly, or linked slips that amplify shaking, are now necessary to include in planning. Risk is no longer a matter of clear lines, but of complicated mosaics. Even where the chance for a large rupture seems remote, the effects, if they happen, could be sharper, less predictable, and spread across previously safe zones. For Seattle, this matters deeply. A 2005 Earthquake Engineering Research Institute model imagining a 6.7 magnitude Seattle fault quake concluded ground rupture could reach about six feet, enough to inspire caution. Today's more detailed segment-based models suggest varied, even amplified outcomes. Some neighborhoods may be spared, while others face focused motion as energy refracts along the bedrock's fissured edges. Throughout the Pacific Northwest, awareness of segmentation is reshaping disaster planning. Not all communities face the same odds. Vulnerability is now mapped as a complex quilt of local hazard. In particular, Washington's coastal land, soft, saturated, and often just above sea level, could drop nearly seven feet in a major quake, as models in history show. Such rapid subsidence could instantly flood neighborhoods, ports, and infrastructure. If past preparations aimed only at the last known threat or model, what does it mean when newer, more complex dangers emerge? How do we plan when our baseline assumptions are themselves shifting? The tremor next door, subtle quakes, real risks. For most residents, the Seattle Fault remains a distant abstraction. The city's daily hum is undisturbed, and earthquakes, until they force a reckoning, live mostly in headlines and emergency plans. Lately, though, comfort has been gently shaken. There have been no catastrophic scenes, but small tremors, a pattern, minor quakes, like a 3.0 and 3.5 magnitude registered within days. These are not the disasters that fill news bulletins, but they are not meaningless either. Each marks a reminder from the earth. This fault is not asleep. Scientists pore over the readings, mapping correlations between microfractures and subsurface models and the subtle seismic activity. In the recent past, such movement might have been dismissed as tectonic background noise. Now, with the context of segmentation and renewed stress indicators, even small quakes have layered significance. So far, the physical costs are minimal. The recent earthquakes have been low intensity, causing little to no damage to the built environment. Still, their presence is instructive, suggesting variability in the fault stress regime and raising concern about future possibly more consequential movement. Some places might ignore such minor quakes as irrelevant, but in Seattle, this pattern reflects deeper uncertainties and reinforces the need for vigilant interpretation. The risk landscape is not stable. It shifts with every tremor and every new scientific insight. Are these small movements just background noise or are they the first hints of a louder chapter yet to come? If the land's whispers go unheeded, might the next signal be one Seattle is not ready for? Beneath the surface, sinking land and the imprint of catastrophe. Talk of earthquakes is talk of transformation, sometimes swift, sometimes enduring. Yet the scale of hazard is hidden not just in the immediate shocks, but in cascading secondary effects. The dominoes quietly lined up, ready for the right nudge. A significant quake along the Cascadia subduction zone would threaten more than just shaking, Washington's coasts, already low and prone to water, could drop by almost seven feet in moments. The loss is not just measured in inches, but in how quickly familiar landscapes could be transformed into temporary wetlands as salt water 
and rivers surge in unimpeded. The danger is immediate for those near the water and not theoretical. Both mathematical models and the historical record affirm the plausibility of this suddenly lowered, inundated land. Survivors of shaking might find themselves trapped by rising tides, with neighborhoods isolated and urban routines interrupted for days or longer. The city itself is not immune. Even away from the shore, uneven sinking, cozyismic subsidence could stress buildings unpredictably. Foundations might crack or tilt, frames warp, or structures shift in subtle but serious ways. Some impacts play out in cascading failures. Water mains, built for consistent loads, could rupture, and old pipes might break under new stress. Seattle's urbanscape makes the challenge sharper still. Built on hills, fill, and the remnants of old natural waterways, the city's underlying geology is anything but uniform. Uneven sinking would manifest differently from block to block, putting unpredictable new strains on aging infrastructure. If every inch of subsidence multiplies the disaster's magnitude, we must ask, is survival of the initial quake the real benchmark? Or is it resilience in the aftermath, the ability to adapt and recover from altered land, shifted homes, and new hazards? Changing the odds, probability, preparedness, and the lessons of recent research. Each advance in seismic forecasting sharpens our grasp of risk. Currently, Scientists estimate about a 37% chance that a megathrust earthquake magnitude 7.1 or greater will strike the Cascadia subduction zone within the span of a human lifetime. That sounds remote until you realize it's nearly one in three. Yet, as knowledge increases, so does complexity. The latest seismic models show not just new cracks, but new patterns. Risk is now charted with higher resolution identifying some sites as newly vulnerable and others as less so. The top 10 most at-risk areas are constantly re-evaluated, with California still topping the national rankings, yet the Pacific Northwest receiving more attention as new data emerges. Seattle lives at this intersection. It faces the big one scenario, a rare but devastating megathrust quake from far offshore, and also the ongoing, more frequent threat of smaller surface ruptures along local faults. Each comes with unique risks, demanding different strategies. Urban planners and engineers have long fortified buildings by the standards of previous disasters, but the evolving science requires continuous recalibration, updating codes, inventorying vulnerable infrastructure, and running tactical drills tailored to both megathrust and segmented fault scenarios. Urban Anatomy – How Earthquakes Break the Built Environment Amid all the data, the key question remains, what does an earthquake mean for this city in concrete terms? When the next significant tremor rattles Seattle, how will the evidence show up in daily life? Research is clear. Uneven sinking creates stresses that most architecture isn't built to withstand. The land shifts irregularly. Neighborhoods can tilt or settle while others remain stable. On building after building, cracks radiate across foundations and walls. Wooden frames twist. Steel beams are forced to bear new angles or loads. In severe cases, entire structures may be deformed past repair. But the challenges go beyond cracks in concrete. Underground utility networks, pipes, power lines, and fiber can break or disconnect as the earth moves beneath them. Sewage lines designed for precise gravity flow may buckle and stormwater systems can overflow or fail if their underlying grades change unexpectedly. As water and power are often critical for emergency and recovery, their failure can magnify the crisis well beyond the initial shaking. Living with the fault, memory, adaptation, and the long shadow. Insight brings reassurance. So far, the region's earthquake intensities have left the built environment mostly unscathed, Daily life continues, the skyline endures, yet beneath the calm, experts work steadily. City planners, architects, and researchers press for appropriate vigilance. New construction guidelines, critical service redundancies, and emergency routes designed with the latest hazard maps in mind. Buildings are gradually reinforced, lifelines rerouted, and evacuation corridors identified, all reflecting a culture that aims to coexist safely 
with risk. Neighborhoods mapped over stress cracks hold more frequent drills. Schools use simulations to help young people visualize risk. Information campaigns translate complex research into practical advice, working to shift preparedness from abstract worry to concrete habit. The region's own history, though missing a recent megathrust event in living memory, is rich with reminders. The New Madrid earthquakes of 1811 and 1812, far from Seattle, but resonant in their lessons, showed how entire communities can be transformed by unexpected quakes. In the Pacific Northwest, communities plan for both the known and the unknown, aware that the next disruption could arrive from a new direction. Preparedness, then, is more than compliance. It's a cultural commitment, a decision to recalibrate risk and adjust to a shifting landscape. Each new finding about the fault, each minor tremor, is a call for vigilance without panic and adaptation without fatalism. Is this, then, Seattle's best contribution? A city that chooses not invulnerability, but constant thoughtful adjustment to the realities of living where the land is always slowly on the move. Shifting focus, science, community, and the will to endure. These seismic discoveries have pushed the conversation from scientific circles into public life. Now, policymakers, emergency managers, and residents all have a stake in Seattle's geological narrative. Decisions made today require balancing expanded knowledge with community responsibility. The city, a test case for resilience, now draws attention nationally as it adapts preparation to meet evolving threats. Ultimately, resilience is measured not just at the moment of disaster, but through recovery. Seattle's ongoing challenge, like that of all cities on restless ground, is to build not just for survival, but for endurance. For weeks and months of adaptation, repair, and adjustment. The Silent Rift, Seattle's ongoing story. Seattle is now part of an ancient tradition. Communities that learn to live at the meeting points of powerful geological forces. Its identity, the combination of water, innovation, resilience, and sky, now includes a sharpened sense of vigilance and adaptation. Each new day brings the temptation to believe all is normal, unchanged, and safe. But the signals tracked in buried cracks and shifting models say otherwise. If you want to follow every twist and tremor beneath the nation's restless edge, like this video and subscribe so you never miss another seismic discovery. In the comments, tell us how ready do you think Seattle really is for the realities beneath its feet? Are we prepared or merely hopeful the next rupture will be somewhere else? Thank you for watching. Remember, in every city, under every story, the world remakes itself, sometimes quietly, sometimes all at once. The earth keeps its secrets, but with vigilance and curiosity, we might just learn how to listen.